Alberta Bound, Alberta Bound. What's the best song you can think of about Alberta? Gordon Lightfoot. I'm good, I'm glad to be Alberta Bound. That would be my second choice. Four Strong Winds would be my first choice. And particularly Neil Young's version. More so than Tyson. Yeah, oh yeah. How does Neil Young do it? I think I'm going to Alberta. I'm not singing. You just curtail your driving and you're singing. We're heading to Balzac. Balzac's a little north and east of Calgary. We're going to see Archie this morning, 84 years old. Apparently he's got all kinds of old farm implements. Archie's the guy that accumulates things. He's been doing this for a long time. So this should be interesting. Hey, this is it up here. Got some sheds, that's a good sign. Could be some stuff in there. Yeah, he's got stuff. Oh, holy smokes, I can see stuff in the field. Wow. Hey, look, art, farm art. <laughs> There's a pile of stuff here. Looks like our kind of guy. Let's go meet Archie. I'm Sheldon. How do you do? Hi, Archie, I'm Scott. Scott. Hi, Scott. Nice to meet you. So how long have you been here? About 10 years. You've accumulated a lot of stuff. I do a little trading and selling odds and ends. I just like meeting people, and they seem to go away with happy. Think we're going to find a treasure here? Depends how tough you are. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well come inside. Oh, man, look at this place. Wow, there's stuff everywhere. Hey. What are those critters? That's a jackalope and a goat lope, cross between a jackrabbit and a antelope. He's got a nice it? set of horns on him, that one jackalope. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like it's going to be a fun pick. What you got here, Archie? An ammonite that hasn't been uh, shined up. That's a piece of petrified snail, big honking snail. It's got a little color to it. It can be broken up and made into pieces of jewelry. If it's the right piece, if it cleans up, it could be extremely valuable. What would you want for that? Oh, 75. Would you take 50? All right. Done. I'm willing to bet $50 that maybe there's some potential there. I'm always searching because there's always going to be a diamond in the rough. Archie, you got a little ukulele here. Yep. Ukuleles can bring really good money if you got the right one. The ones you're looking for are made in Hawaii. They're made out of koa wood, which is a wood you can't harvest anymore. This one's got some age to it. And what do you want for that? 25. How about 20? Two and a half, it's yours. <laughs> oh, yeah, you gave him a deal. What about me? <laughs> <laughs> OK, shake the man's hand, Sheldon. Alrighty. I noticed you're doing a little work with some willow here. Yep, diamond willow. I'd never seen anybody do the female form out of diamond willow. I love the way you've used the knots. Like there's her belly button. <laughs> yeah. Just very Should appropriately. Be for her eye, maybe. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Huh. Very much like Inuit carving. They yeah. look at a piece of stone and say they're going to carve away the extra. They can see yeah. that bird in there, and they carve away what isn't a bird. You've done the same with her. You're quite artistic, Archie. Hey, what do you got over there? That's my tool horse. He nods his head and he poops golf ball. <laughs> hey, I like the way that you've worked the mane. Do, what do you do? Do you sit up on top and ride it? You've got to be a yeah. brave man to do that. I've never seen a horse I didn't want to get on the back of. Watch yourself, partner. There we are. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> That's more like it. Couldn't reach the pedals on it to make it go. Got it to drop a golf ball anyway. You got a lot of time on your hands, Archie. <laughs> I see you got an old Alberta transportation sign. I don't even know if it's legal to have this. My wife's been asking me to find one of those signs, a slippery when wet diamond shaped sign. You don't see the guy with the hat anymore, right? Mm -hmm. And nobody wears a hat anymore. <laughs> and they quit making that hat probably two decades ago. What would you want for that? Oh, $20. So I'll do 20 bucks on that. Deal. You got the vertebrae of a, is that a horse? Nope, get it down for you. And then you can guess what it's off. Oh. 
So what do you think that is? Skeleton golf. Uh, let me just see. Just a second. Come on, faster than that. An ostrich. I can't even figure out which ends up yet. <laughs> Whoa! There's the thing. And there's its leg. And it hooks into the joint here. Yeah, yeah. Where'd you find this, Archie? It was on a farm I bought from an ostrich razor. Tell you what, that's a formidable leg. Yeah. And the toe, no wonder they can yeah. do so much damage with it. Yeah. What's the going rate on an ostrich leg these days? I don't know where I'd get another one. Me yeah. neither. I'm pretty sure I don't want one. Here, Scott, this is a back scratcher Not for you. Not a chance, you. man. <laughs> you take a look outside. Mm -hmm. There's an oldie. Oh, yeah. Man, I bet you that thing's got to be 100 pounds. The Massey Harris, front grill off an old tractor. It would be cool, just screwed right to the wall. Oh, yeah. So I'd love to have that thing. What would you want for your tractor grill? Oh, I just got that. I don't know the value of it. How much did you pay? It was on my farm I bought. So how much did you pay for the farm? 300 bucks an acre. What do you think this is worth, a quarter acre? I have a feeling Archie ain't parting with it. Buy your sweetheart a washing machine here. I don't want any washing machines, but I would like that Massey Harris grill. When I learn it's true value, I'll be selling it. Were you a bit of a cowboy yourself when you were growing up? Oh, yeah, a little bit. A little bull riding? And bareback. Here's my gun. Looks like the pride and joy. Yeah. He's got the Colt 45. I made it for advertising for the housing development I did just north of Balzac. It's a barbecue. <laughs> and it's got a barbecue? It does a little more than that. I'm afraid. You, you gotta yell fire in the hole before you do that, buddy. A lot of guys like it, and especially kids. See if you can hit me. Goes to quite a few yard parties. You be careful there, picker buddy. Oh, come on. <laughs> Is that all you got? I was out playing goal. You got no more than that? Archie's got a good sense of humor. I'm amazed at his ingenuity. You want to hear a really loud one? Nope. <laughs> I think we've done as much damage as we can do. I'm happy with that. I'm willing to bet $50 that maybe there's some potential there. We'll have some fun with it. OK, good meeting yep. you. That was a lot of fun. Yep. Yeah, you, you take care. You take you. care of yourself. Right. I, ho I okay. hope I'm as active as you at 84. I didn't give you the door prize. Is there a door prize? Oh, yeah, there's a door prize. Wait till I get them for you. A rock. One each. One each. <laughs> you get the green one. Yeah. There we go. At least the price was right. <laughs> <laughs> they laughed at my wife's cracks and stuff, so they're pretty good guys if they do that. Good dick. I want to go see our picks. We got a lot of stuff in the warehouse. The stuff that we really haven't had a chance to take a good look at yet. Brought you coffee. Beautiful, thanks. Yeah. Uh, see what we got in here? I'm today. sure we got <laughs> lots of work. Uh, wow. Did it seem like that much when we were buying it? No. We were buying it a one vehicle load at a time. It looks like everything got here. So I'm glad to see this again. Yeah, this is the Quebec stuff. I'm going to carry that around in the back of my vehicle, and every time I need my own parking spot, I'm going to plant it there. Uh, this dry sink looks even better in Alberta than it did in Montreal. The pimp and the prostitute got here in one piece. I already got a buyer for that painting. We got so much stuff here. We can call in a few of our buddies, some of the pickers that we know, and have booze and antique stores. And start selling some stuff. Let them pick the pickers. We're on the front line, and we will buy something, and we will wholesale it to an antique shop or a dealer, who will then price it up at retail. So let's just move it along. We got a lot of cash out. We need to get some cash back in. 
So we're gonna have a sale. I'd say we get into gear, do this in a big hurry. Let's put the word out to some of the people. Get them here for Saturday. Yeah. The point of this is to do some quick flips, to get some cash flowing. We've got other picks that we wanna buy some more stuff. So time to sell some things. I don't think I could take much more of this right now. No, we got a pick. We wanna to add to this stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Always buying. Why not load her up more? Are you driving today? I'm driving. Gorgeous day, absolutely gorgeous day. I hope it's this nice for our sale. Yeah. I'm gonna make a couple calls. That's it. I'm here with Sheldon. We're thinking of having a sale on Saturday afternoon. Are you around? Oh, good. Well, if you want to show up around 12.30 or so, uh, maybe you want to be there because we're going to invite a few other people and you don't want to be last in line. Okay, I'll see you then. Bye. He's in? He's in. We're going to see Terry. When you tell me it's Terry, I'm wondering if it's the guy I know. He's got a ton of stuff. It's the same guy. Whether he's a seller, I'm not quite sure about here. This could be our place. I've known him for years and years and years sold stuff to him, friends of mine have sold stuff to him, but I've never seen his place. This has got to be it, there's stuff all over. I see an old tractor. A little cart there looks like a coal mining cart. And he's got some collectibles out there too. Outbuildings, this guy's got lots of stuff in outbuildings. Oh yeah, this is the place. <laughs> hey. I thought it might be you. Yeah. How, How are, are you guys? doing, Scott? Good. Good. Sheldon Smithen. Hi, hey, Terry. Sheldon. Nice to meet you. So you've been collecting for ages. Probably 25, 30 years. My brother and I started collecting, and it kind of went out of hand. Yeah, I never knew you was a seller, so that's no, why. No, I probably should be selling a few things. The buildings are kind of <laughs> overflowing right now. I wouldn't mind if you guys wanted to have a look around and see what was here. <laughs> that's music to these yeah. ears, yeah. So, Terry, where do you want to start? In the house here, and we'll have a look around in there. And Come on in, guys. I know Terry's traded with people before, but I don't know that I've ever heard that Terry's actually sold anything before. So I'm sure hoping he's a seller. There might be something in here you're interested in. You got collections of collections yeah. here, Terry. I see something that I want. I've got one of these. It's an old microphone radio. Yeah. Every radio station in the United States, pretty much, gave them away, and they could only tune into that radio station. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. No, that's something I didn't know. <laughs> They're really a good-looking radio, and microphone collectors like them. Did you cut the cord off, or did it come off? I the think it came cut. What it's... would you want for that little guy? I'd uh, I'd have to have about eighty bucks for that. Yeah. Considering it's not in too bad a shape. It's in great shape. It's yeah. just the cord is the yeah. only issue. Hmm. Would you go 60? I can't do 60 on that because I probably am taking a bit of a bite on it. As at 80, you're taking at, a bit of a bite 80, on it. Yeah. Good enough. Broke the ice. Don't know if it works. Don't really care. A quick flip in a couple days. That's kind of an interesting one. That's been around the farm for a long time. What would you want for that, Terry? I got to have 20 bucks for that. But I don't think we can get hurt at 20 bucks. Thank you, sir. Yep, you're welcome. Whoa, this is dangerous. Don't kill yourself, Scott. We need you to load the truck later. <laughs> yeah. This was used in a school in the 1800s. This would be the sun, the earth, and there should be a little orbiting moon, planet. Little moon or orbiting, orbiting, that goes yeah, around. Yeah. And as this spun around, it taught the kids where the earth was in relation to the, the sun, sun and, the and the moon. Yeah. Scientific instruments are really a desirable field to collect. It is so old. Stuff like this oh, just I, doesn't come up. Somebody put scotch tape on it. Like, yeah. that wasn't you. Please no, tell me that. No. And I'm not sure if I can get the scotch tape off of it. But it's so old and brittle. That one just needed too much attention for Scott and I to flip to somebody else. Nice Ford station wagon there. Yes. Ford Fairlane Ranch Wagon. 395, and that has a good friend of mine, Glenn's handwriting on the yes. bottom of it. You paid a lot for that. At the time, I just had to have it. I couldn't live another day without it. Yeah, and now that you've had it for a while? I could probably take $200, and you could drive it on out of here. Could we flip that for 250 at our sale? I'm not sure about I'm that. I'm not sure either. And I, you know what? I, I can't even beat you up on it, because you've already beat yourself I, up I'm enough. beat up already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything we would want down here? This was Picker Heaven. Lots of stuff there, and it's in the basement. A good sign. If it was Terry's favorite item, he'd probably be enjoying it upstairs. Can I pull this out so we can look? Absolutely. Well, that's a good image, isn't it? Wow. Those were Lancaster bombers right after the war, 1946. 
Is that one you'd part with? That is probably the one I would part with. Oh, what would we pay for that? I'm going to ask you that question for a change. 25? I'd have to have a little more, maybe 30. Okay, I can argue okay. for five bucks. I didn't think I was going to be able to buy anything from Kerry. I got to have 30 bucks for that. Okay, done. Because I never have before. I was just getting a big kick out of wheeling and dealing. There might be something in here you're interested in. So there's a uh, little bit over here. Wow. And a little bit over there. There's stuff everywhere. Holy. It looks like you've got some black Americana. Certain people are offended by black Americana. Other people highly prize and value black Americana. And I don't have a judgment call on that one way or the other. It's part of history. That's what it is. Uh, this I've yeah. seen a ton of times before. Yes, yeah. It, Terry had a mechanical bank. It comes in both cast. It comes in aluminum. This one it looks to me like if it's not an 1800s one, it's an early 1900s yeah. one. It's a good okay. one. Um, this, I'm not sure what that is. That m was mounted on a post. And you put a ring in there, and you tied your horse up to that. A little politically oh, incorrect today, it, isn't it? It is, it is. Surprisingly, the, the most expensive black American is collected by African Americans. So what would you want, say, for the bank? I got to have a couple hundred bucks for that. 150 is sort of where we'd feel comfortable. I don't know if that works for you or not. Uh, probably not. I'm pretty stuck on $200 on that. No. OK. It was a fair price but not a fair price if I'm going to try and do a quick flip on it. This, though, what would you need out of that? I've got to have $300 for that, just because of its rarity. It's, it's something I've had a long time. I've, I've had that probably 35 years. Well, I think maybe we should put that back. It's a little bit of a tough sell in Western Canada. There's not as big a collector's market here. Now, people... <laughs> That's great. The Trans-Canada Toilet Tissue. Now, that is hilarious. Somebody stole that off the train back in the 30s. Right. Trans-Canada toilet tissue. You know, that is yeah. hilarious. People collect just about everything. I don't know if it's real or a joke. All I know is it's got a train on it. <laughs> I'm not sure whether you'd wrap presents with it or use it. <laughs> I want to know how much it's worth. You know what? I don't have a value on it exactly, but... The replacement cost is probably The replacement cents. cost is high, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a long trip back to the city for you guys. Um, I'm going to say... <laughs> 15 bucks. Oh, well, of course, it is genuine two process <laughs> crate. <so. laughs> Shake his hand on that. I think that's funny. That's the first time I've ever bought toilet paper in my life. I think the toilet paper roll is going to get me a lot of laughs and nothing more. Now, this alligator had a little guy that sat on top of him. I think you're right. This guy would pull back on a loop that was through here, and his mouth would go open and close. The little driver was missing on it. The wind-up mechanism didn't move. But it was still a good figural alligator. What would you want for him, just like that? I'd say five bucks. Yeah, that's done. If that toy's complete and in good condition, it's $250, $350 for five bucks. How do you walk away? There's a good dinky tank and a whole bunch of other, uh, the whole armies here. Oh. I love toys. There's the tank transporter. So you put that little gate baby right on the back of him. Here we go. Yeah, and then there's some ambulances. You got the whole military contingent here. Yeah, I bought them in a box for years ago, and they've been sitting around here collecting dust for years. Dinky's a brand name of a company called Meccano out of England. They made the best die-cast metal toys that have ever been made. Well, some people, when they're collecting dinks, they don't know is the difference is the windows. Post-1963, they were plastic windows. Mm -hmm. So before that, they were open windows. Right. But what would you sell the box for? I'd go 75 bucks on it. You know a what? Lot. That's a fair price. OK. I'll just shake on I'll that. We'll do that. Thanks, Good, Terry. Right? Yeah, you're welcome. That's yeah. great. Might have something I can show you later in that field of uh, Is that right? Collecting, yeah. Now, that sounds interesting. Yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a toy? It's kind of my personal toy, yeah. <laughs> So. Oh, I can hardly wait. Why don't we take a hike outside? Hey, let's go. We throw odds and ends in here. There's quite a bit of stuff in here. So far, we kind of like your odds and yeah. ends. <laughs> well, go on in and have a look. Whoa, you got some stuff here. Stuff was piled up high on either side and right down the center. Scott and I were doing a little bit of speed picking. And look at this spinning wheel. This is the goofiest thing I've seen in a long time. Bicycle wheel, spinning wheel. 
That is ridiculous. That came from an old, old farm down in Saskatchewan. Somebody probably had a wooden bicycle that got wrecked, and not being the wasteful type in the dirty 30s, they made a spinning wheel out of it. What do you want for that, Terry? Well, I was thinking I should get about $100 for it, considering it is a real wooden bicycle wheel that's probably worth that. I was hoping you'd say 50. Well, I was hoping you might come back at 75. <laughs> well, and, and how about this? Could we say 75 and then maybe package something else in with it? Well, we could maybe sweeten it up, yeah. What would you sweeten it up with here? You know what? I would throw that old redhead five gallon. I figured you were going to say right. that. Yeah, why not? That's a nice Canadian one. And you my... throw that in, and 75, we got a deal. OK. Walk up through there and One piece turn at a to time. your left. What's the point of this stuff here? <laughs> this is all stock, in case I ever need it. It's all <laughs> in stock materials. Then turn around to the left there. Ooh, I had to take you boys <laughs> to show you my toy. Holy. How are we going to get that in the truck, Sheldon? Oh, what a surprise. Life-size tank, the real thing. If we bought this, we wouldn't need a truck. Guess hey. what, boys? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to turn the key and see oh. if we can get the old girl started. Oh, man, that would be fun. I don't know, Scott. When I saw Sheldon playing with that tank, I just knew that I'd have to take them out and show them the real tank I got. It's called a universal carrier. Built in 1942 in Canada and used extensively in World War II. Would this piece have gone to Europe? I don't know. I picked it up here from an old war vet. Hey, well, let's fire it up. OK, let's do it. You gotta tell me right or left. Straight back. That tank came up for sale in a newspaper ad. I just happened to be the first guy there, and I was very happy that I had a tank. Even though I don't really know what I'm ever gonna do with it, I still like owning it. Okay, who's driving? Kim. Okay. Are there brakes on this thing? Not really. So what do you Stop. do? Clutch in. Put Which the one's the clutch? In? Holy shit, we're in trouble. The, the brake doesn't work. <laughs> Is he off? Here's some He's off. Rep. We're going. I stalled it. I guess I didn't hit the gas okay. hard enough. It was wild. As soon as it kicked in, it just went and it just threw you. It was pretty scary at the start. They were actually heading for a grain bin, and I, I could see the tank crawling up the side of the grain bin, but they did manage to get the clutch in in time. It's a bit of a tough drive. You don't have to stop for anything because it just crunches everything in its path. Good for the prairies if you want to go in a straight line and not look back. Yeah. That's the new picker mobile. Wow. wow. I have heard of Armstrong steering before. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've been working out on barbells all night. <laughs> that was just incredible. Oh, oh, hey, that was, well, that was good. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it, guys. <laughs> I'm glad it's not for sale, because I wouldn't know what to do with it if he sold it to me. Wow, <laughs> that's a score. If I've sold every military dinky I've ever bought, That was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm glad you guys came out. All in all, I think it was a win-win for both of us. Whew, that was a good day. I never thought we'd ever be able to pick from Terry. We made some calls. We're looking like we're going to have a good sale tomorrow. We should be throwing some price tags on this stuff, too. Or yeah. Everybody's going to be yelling, hey, Scott. How much is this? Sheldon, what do you want for these? You know, we're yeah. going to be torn in six different directions. Have you called Joe and Terry? Yep. Oh. 
Okay. They'll both be there. No, we're going to have a good little sale there. Stuff will be flying out the door. We're on our way to a pick. This one's an evening one. So tell me about John. He's an Englishman, but he loves cowboy stuff. I've known him for about 20 years, and if he buys something, it's always the best of the best. Why is he selling? He's got a lot. He's got multiples of some things. How motivated he is, we're going to find out. This should be interesting. You know him. You may as well go first. Sure. Sheldon, how are you doing? Hey, this is Scott. Hey, hi, Scott. How are you doing? Hi. Come in, guys. Wow. <laughs> he had something of everything in that room, and I liked most of it. I'm perplexed. Yeah. I'm seeing things like scientific instruments oh. besides shops and saddles. It may be junk, but it's English junk. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from England and watching uh, Western movies when I was a kid, I kind of grew up liking the cowboy uh, culture. Really like quality. And I like things that are highly unusual and that tell a story. That's the most impressive collection of scientific instruments I've seen in a long time. Is this a navigational instrument? You're 100% right. It's called a dip circle. They used these before they had sextants, and it's actually used for measuring magnetic north. That would be a particularly valuable piece. I'm sure we're not going home with that today, Scott, as much as I'd like to. <laughs> and I see you've got a couple of incredible California saddles. Yeah, yeah. I love the silver work and the tooling. Oh, just gorgeous. This one here is kind of interesting, too, smaller. Not the high back. It's a little later in time, yeah. Yeah. I have a feeling that uh, these are probably out of uh, a couple of pickers' price range. How did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> about a pound of silver on the horn might have told you. Oh, me. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> what about this? Well, it's an honest-to-goodness saddle. It's a working saddle. It's yeah. not actually signed. It, it is in very, very good condition. The leather, the wear, all honest. It was really nice. With the tooling and everything, it's, yeah. um, it's quite a bit of detail on it, as you can see. I've never seen so many good things in one place. Is this something we could uh, maybe pull the trigger on? I've got quite a bit of stuff, and at some point or other, I have to thin it down a little bit. Let's give you a, our best shot. You know enough about saddles. You make the best shot, and I'm going with you on it. I have never seen any that I could buy that good. Well, don't shoot the messenger, but I'd say 300. Um, goodness me. It's in excellent condition. There's a lot of craftsmanship in it. Why don't we make it 350? I don't think we can do more than 300 on that. Yeah, I'm thinking the same. Tell you what, let's say 300, mm -hmm. and we'll throw an extra 50 bucks in the next valuable okay. item. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you what, guys. I'll tell you what, guys. If you buy sufficient from me today, we'll make sure that. Um, hey, if this is any indication happy. of what you're going to show us, we'll buy sufficient. 300 dollars. That doesn't normally buy you much of a saddle. John played ball on that. Sheldon, look at these chaps. Oh yeah. You know, I've seen this before, where they put clubs, spades, diamond hearts on beadwork. That's a beautiful pair of shafts. Wow. They look like they're 1920s-ish. I would say they probably would. They're uh, heisers. And mm. uh, they're obviously uh, batwing shafts used yeah. on the wow. prairies. Feel the weight of them. Can I put them on? <laughs> I don't, yeah, think, go. I don't think I'd go. want to put them on, but no. <laughs> I'd like to have them, but I know if I buy one pair, I'm going to be paying top dollar. But if I can put a package deal together, the lower the price per shaft. And hey. these are a bit of a planer set, right? Uh, just a little bit, but look at the great arrows. These are like rodeo shafts, right? They could be using rodeos, yeah. yeah. They're sort of the same vintage, maybe a little later 30s, maybe? Mid to late 20s. That is Alberta. That is for me, Western Canada. That's about the closest you've got to an ordinary set of shafts, yeah. and that's a really good set of shafts. The buttoning's all there. Yeah. They're in great shape. There's oh, look at the tool work again, the leather tooling. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Just flows. Another yeah. beauty set with hearts on them. Oh, yeah. Now, there's a romantic cowboy that wore these ones. <laughs> I think so, right? yeah. <laughs> all the brass work on them, it's just beautiful. These are interesting, because a lot of people mistake this. You see, again, a lot in native work, where they have, well, like, a reverse swastika. 
The Navajo used it as a sign of good luck. Now the tool work is gorgeous too. And that dates these ones because I don't think they did much of this after the 1920s. I put these at probably about 1910 to yeah. 1915 with the, uh, the Navajo symbols. I've dealt in Western wear for a long time and I've never seen a pair as starry as these ones. Albertans value their Western heritage. Shaps are a big part of Western heritage. Virtually every pair of those shafts was a rodeo shaft that a rodeo cowboy would have worn on a bull riding or a horse riding. Wow, look at that. You got like almost like a rising sun pair. These are Hollywood shafts, yeah. Wow. These are made for cowboys on the movies. They probably date from about the 20s. Yeah. They're wow. a little bit uh, different from the ordinary working shafts. They're showpieces, aren't they? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. They are the best of the best. John, are you prepared to sell your shafts? I may be prepared to sell some of them. Okay, if you were going to sell them per pair, what are you looking for? If you're prepared to buy uh, a bunch of them, I may be prepared I'm to already. negotiate. <laughs> I'm thinking, uh -uh. if we bought six pairs, there's three grand. Ah, uh, that's a little bit, bit low, actually. And how about a thousand a piece? Good Western wear is really hard to find. It's not going to get any easier to find it. So that market's going to continue to go up. I'm not trying to hurt you on them. I know you paid good money for them, but I think I'd go from 500 a pair to seven a pair. And that's a big move for me. You know what's got its piece of history? And it's Western Canadian. Yeah, it is. 5,000 for the lot. This is one shot, OK? Because I'm sticking my neck out on this. I'll hear you. I'll go 800 a pair. That's 40, 800. I ain't going a cent higher. OK, sounds good. Shake quick before I change my mind. <laughs> I think Scott likes quality as well, and I got a feeling he might be wanting to keep a few of the pieces for himself. <laughs> I paid more money for those shafts than I've ever paid for shafts in my life, but I feel great about it. There's a couple pairs that I don't mind if I have to keep them. We're going away with some great Western gear. Always good to see you. That was a lot of fun. Now, John, absolutely great to finally meet you. Well, yeah. come and see us again, OK? I will do that. Are they basically antique nuts like myself? Hey, that was incredible. It was a lot of fun. You didn't let me know what I was getting into there. Today's sale day, and we're going to move some merchandise. Hey, Terry, so you know about it. It's 1 o'clock. We've invited a few of our friends. Bill at Sheldon, people that I think recognize a good buy, and they're coming to pick from the pickers. Just wanted to make sure you're coming, because there's a bunch of stuff for you. Where's my book? I think I'm going to be winging it most of the day. It's showtime. Here we go. We picked. We hope we picked right. Bought stuff inexpensively as we possibly could. Theory here is we're marking this stuff up very little over what we paid for. We're not trying to make a big buck here. We're trying to do a quick flip, move it along. Hey, good luck yeah. in your picking. Come on in. It's the best one you'll ever see. If you want something, you just put a tag beside the price tag, and your color will be your tag. They're the quarter. It's a great little okay, sign. I've tried to price as best I could each item in my area. My partner, Chatty Kathy, has been talking up a storm but hasn't priced anything. So did he quote you 140? We were over there, and he said, this 140. is 140, and there's a whole bunch more. It's organized chaos in there. I'm having a great time talking to people, doing a sell job, giving them some history. This is cool, too, a hotel, old hotel one. Molson Breweries, getting them excited about it. 54, it's Sid. <laughs> Sheldon never ceases to amaze me. All right. Oh, you want them all? Done. He sold every sled he bought and at good prices, too. I'll do that. Give me, well, I got some blue tags. Go ahead, go look. Got to take my hat off. Think I will. Thanks, Zorro. <laughs> <laughs>
You know, I'm feeling good because I'm walking into the back room and I'm seeing Sid and Terry and Jerry and they're putting stickers on everything. And that's what I want to see. Scott? 20 bucks? Is that too much? Sid's one of my favorite people in the business. Tell you what, 50. I've, I've probably paid that much for it. I'm shooting out a price. Hey. Good. 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 You showed it? Yeah. What do you think of this? I think it's a lethal weapon. It, it would come in handy. Yeah. We were paying 25 a piece, so 35? 35. Mm. 30. I better, I better stick with Scott's price. He said 15. How much lower than 15 did you think I might go? Said he's taking the same thing to Sheldon and asking Sheldon what he wants for it. I gotta go see Scott. Oh, man. <laughs> and taking the lesser of two. Smart and, guy. Yeah. <laughs> I put a sticker on that. It's incredible, isn't it? Terry was interested in the Trick Rider canvas poster. Just so happens, Terry's got a store in Nanton, which specializes in Western Native and Pioneer collectibles. We did exactly what we wanted to do when we bought that thing. Is we brought it back to where it should be sold. I am so happy you got this. Marked it up a modest amount of money. We paid $9.50, we got $1,500. It's going to look great in your shop. I hope so. Yeah. She's going to put $3,500 in that store, and she'll sell it. Thanks, Terry. Yeah, you bet. Win-win. Love it. Hey, Sheldon. He's buying for resale. Oh, you spotted the Mason's altar. She's a businesswoman, and she's sharp. It's great, isn't it? I don't know if you noticed the painting on all the sides. Masonic symbols. She's just like us. She's looking for the best buy she can because she's turning it over at the best price she can. It would make a great kitchen island. Six and a quarter? Perfect. Uh -huh. Done. Hey, thanks, Terry. It's the weird and unusual that we're after. You've got some great buys so far. You know, it's great to see some of my old buds I haven't seen for a while that are in the business that sell at a retail level. Good job, guys. And we're hoping that we got some stuff that's going to help them make a little bit of money. What was the Ford sign price? Oh, 400 for that. Like Jerry and Terry had one thing in common. They see the common stuff all the time. They kick that over. They bought all the unusual, interesting, rare things. I got you. And they'll price those aggressively, and they'll get the money for them. Oh, God, Jerry's put his tag on a whole bunch of things. I buy and sell antiques for a living. Police size. 25 bucks? I can't remember. Sounds good to me. Jerry's been in the business as long as I've been in Calgary. Scott, I was wondering what you wanted for the two whiskey posters here. Uh, the old Seagram's advertising, um, seven and a quarter on that one and probably a hundred and a quarter on that one. I think that one for sure, because I like the artist. Is he a Canadian, early Canadian artist? And he's a good picker. Labatt's 50 advertising pieces. They would have stood out in front of the liquor store. They're four and a quarter for the pair. Perfect. Got a shake on that. I'm ready. Thanks. I like the advertising stuff, primitives. I like folk art. That come from Quebec? Quebec, yeah. Oh, you got it too, great. Excellent, Jerry. <laughs> the rocking horse is the favorite thing that I bought today. It's hand carved, uh, the joints are put together. It's probably 1890s. That's pretty early for out this way. Jerry was a big buyer. Okay, so let me add this up here. The Dominion sign was 140. Bought a lot of stuff. The ducks, I think, was 450 for all of them. For the flock, yeah. King Cole, what, what did I say, 140 on that? Yeah, well, I was cheaper than that. I paid 125. Did you? Okay. And I, the price is right. He buys it. I gave you a really good deal on that Seagram sign. Well, that's good. The price isn't right. He doesn't buy it. We know that you you guys got to make money, right? You got a place where you sell this stuff, and you got to make a buck on it. Well, if I don't make money, I'm coming for you. Yeah. <laughs> and it's that simple. We put on more miles than the Montreal Canadiens in the last several months. We've been out across this big country picking. And we're dragging stuff home that they like. They know they have a market floor. Uh, 75. Cool. And there's another Pepsi over there. Bush them and just see for 100. Like Freezer and the prostitute. And the price. Uh -huh. 150 bucks. That's 50 bucks That's a piece. That's 50 bucks a head. You can't beat that. Did you see the, the devil? I did. Quite remarkable. I was gasping for air as we paid 500 for it. We sold them for seven. I'm OK with that. That's an example of where it never hurts to buy a great thing. We have some very unusual stuff. Can you tell me the place of your totem pole? You like the totem pole, Joe? I like the totem pole. I have an antique store in BC. We kind of thought it started life in BC, so it could go back to BC. That's right. Yeah. I like this on the totem pole. It's interesting how the 
the artist has used the knots. We paid $4.50 for it. So I'm going to quote you what I think is a screaming good deal at $6.50. Happy six. Here you go. I'm glad it's going to Joe. He was a good buyer today. This is a nice one. We were so happy. We found it in this market in Winnipeg, yeah. and it was by far and away the best thing in the whole market. It's very unusual. Yeah, and when you consider it, it's gone in and out of several fires. Water, smoke, it's yes. in remarkably good condition. Very nice. What's yeah. the price of that one? Uh, 375 Is that your best price? We paid 250 for the leather fireman's helmet. Would you say 350 Joe? And my wife will kill me, but uh, I still like it. Sure. Done. Good. Uh, definitely suits me. Oh, does that ever look good it on you, man? Definitely suits me. We left a little on the table. Joe's a dealer. He's going to resell. Done. I'm glad okay. you got it, Joe. We quick flipped it. Good profit. Okay, you ready? Show me. Terry and his wife came down. We had so much fun with them, we told them to come on down, they did. They said they had a lot of good stuff, and I just thought we are going to make a special effort to drive in from the farm. There's a screw in the back, right? And so you could transport it, and then when you're in the field, you'd crank this Adjusted. thing up. It was a killer kernels, shaving stand, field stand, so you could use it. It's from a general or a colonel, apparently. Would have been late 1800s out in the military field. Just a killer item. You're never going to see another one of those. we got to get 275 out of it. Done. <laughs> You're a sweetheart. I, I should have been dealing with you before. <laughs> I know this is your deal there, Terry. Yes, I've, I've been looking at this Ford sign. This sign is in great shape. I suspect it's really old, and uh, I will have to find a place to put it in the collection, but I really like it. And I'm going to do you a favor on this, because you sold us stuff fair. Yes. And you paid a decent dollar on this. Your yes. wife did. I'm going to flip it to you for four. Four? Is that all? That's all. That's a wonderful deal. I'll take it. <laughs> okay. Thank you, sir. I'm happy as I could be. This is fun. I know. We got picked by the people we picked. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. This is chaos. No, no, the big grain scale. Two and a quarter? Two and a quarter. People are starting to line up at some point and want to pay us. Would Scott quote you on the deck? Our uh, goose. Three fifty. How much is it? Two twenty-five. It's take a number, and I love doing sales. That's why there's technology. Yeah. I had a lineup. I was the head cashier and employee of the month, and that's what we wanted to create, a little bit of a buying frenzy. Today, it reaffirms Scott and I are on the right track. We're picking hard. We're picking good. We're making some money. They were thanking us for inviting them. They had the best time. Yeah. Coming money, money in there. We had the best time. Have no more money and no more energy, so it's all good. It was just a great day and everybody won. Well, that was a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had that much action for a long time. Betsy's not doing real well. She needs some gas. We're going to stop, fuel up. Of course, I'll be the one fueling up. Hopefully, at least Sheldon will get the windows this time. Holy smokes. Two girls at the gas station, I think they liked you. Never met anybody quite like me before. They asked me if my father was single. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. I brought a few white hats along with us. Perfect. The classic symbol of Calgary. If a guy plays ball, they get the hat, right? Exactly. Good pick, white hat. That white hat tradition goes back to, what was it, Mayor McKay in the 40s? I actually don't know that. I didn't know that. I know we white hat people when they come to town if they're important. I thought we'd switch it up a little bit and take the white hats with us. So we're going up to Bayfield, right on Lake Huron. We're going to see Bill. Bill's been collecting for 60 years. He's got automobilia, gas pumps, signage. Apparently, Phil has a lot of buildings on his land. Well, hopefully, we're going to Phil's land and not landfill. Oh, there. This must be in here. Here we go. Look at this place. Holy Christ! Yeah. It's interesting. This is interesting. There's a little village here. Yeah. We've got a pile of stuff. 
You must be Phil. I am. Phil, Scott Cousins, how are you? How do you do? Hey, Phil, I'm Sheldon. Oh, oh yeah, it's a little it's windy. windy. Well, we were noticing all the buildings coming in. You got a little bit of inventory here, Phil. Yes? I'm calling it Philville. I've heard that before. Looks like you're an accumulator. Yeah, myself, I have mechanical things, clocks, guns, motors, collectibles, Coca-Cola, beer, garden decorations, <laughs> enamelware, signs, advertising, old tractors, the odd antique stove, railroad memorabilia. We also make maple syrup here. I used to have bees here, but I got sick of getting stung, so we don't sell honey anymore. And a few old boats. <laughs> Are you willing to part with a little bit of it today? Well, a little bit, yes. This looks like a good place to start. I can see the bottom of a Coke sign there. Oh, yeah, yeah, OK. Yeah. It's been uh, beat a little bit. In nice shape, they're like 1,200. Yeah, I think the market's dropped a bit on oh, those. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. In, in really good shape, they're worth about 800 now. Yeah, OK. You've got a Quaker State sign here. What did you need out of the Quaker State? Well, I was looking for six on it, but... It, Whoa, that's a pretty uh, steep price. Well, it's a, it's a nice old sign. It's been shot once there. Yeah. I have means to shoot it a few more times, if that helped. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's your turn to make me an offer. At 600, I'm afraid to even make an offer. <laughs> oh, no, don't be shy. <laughs> so I try them on. I couldn't even give you 200 for it. He's like, oh, God, I've been shot. Oh, I think yeah. we're, we're too far That's apart. That's what I said. That's yeah. what I said at the first. Say, Phil, what would you do on this little anvil? 25. Well, you got 20 on it. You're supposed to go down. <laughs> no, but I... Down for the picker, boys, not up. No, you got to start high with you guys, see? OK, well, I'll say four. <laughs> oh, well. Um... <laughs> OK, we'll make it short and sweet. 15 bucks. I knocked five bucks off of $20. Done. OK? I'm having some fun. We broke the ice. You've been looking for one of these for <laughs> right across this vast country. It's not exactly the one I'm looking for, but yeah. it is a bear trap, I think. Yeah. yeah. We want to set it, test it? Yeah. You do the jaws, I'll, I'll hold it down. There we go. I think it's rusted out a little bit. It's not as strong as it used to be. <laughs> Yeehaw! Yeah. So how much is the trap? 250 He's not easy. <laughs> I think I, I should take my anvil and go. <laughs> <laughs> now, you see the, the kick plate Pepsi? Yeah. That's really good shot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it looks like it was in Custer's last stand. He did have one sign on the ceiling that didn't look too bad. It was a Toronto Star sign. Is it double-sided or single-sided? Single-sided. Single-sided. Yeah. Decent sign. It's one you don't see out west as often as some of the other ones. These were actually on bicycle stands. That sign looks to me like from the 40s or 50s. So that would be like 100? Yep. Well, I'm thinking I can do 100 on that. OK. Here's a Buckingham. Yeah, you know, cigarette stuff's really slowed really down pot, as eh? of late, yep. eh? Yeah. The stuff that's really popular is the good oil and gas and yep. coffee and tea, that kind of thing. Yeah. That's a scarce gas pump, isn't it? I've never seen the skinny one like that. This gas pump came with this property when I bought the property in 1979. Wow. So you don't have much into it? Not a lot, no. So I got a total of $49 in that pump. So what would you need out of it? I've turned down five grand for the pump and two for the top. He paid 50 bucks for it. He turned down 7,000. So it's not for sale? Not really. It was never leaving that garage, ever. Uh -huh. I see something I'd like to buy off you. Uh-oh. See, this is kind of stuff that I'm not trying to sell like. This is all your favorite stuff in here. Oh, kind of. Like, it's a workshop where no work gets done. What about the Red Indian That's sign? That's what I'm looking at is oh. the Red Indian sign. It was covering a stovepipe hole. So again, you got nothing into it. Nothing, nothing into, into it, it yeah. I'm what do you want out of it? I like it. So come on, hit me with your best shot on the Red Indian sign. You're actually in the inner sanctum here. Where oh, well, that's really? where we want to be. I assume you're telling me by the lack of response that you're not selling me the Red Indian sign. Not everything's for sale. Like, I have some of my own collections that are not for sale. Unfortunately, they kind of zero in on a lot of the things I like to keep. Do you have any more white rose type stuff or Anarco? They're pretty high priced. You hey. must have bought them 10 years ago. I did. Anarco is a type of oil or gas that was put out by a company, White Rose. It's got the little boy holding the sign on the Anarco, and that's what everybody wants. It's got the figural, it's got the graphics. It's early, 1930s usually. So it's the stuff that's second to Red Indian in terms of popularity. Yikes. Yep. 
You got some serious 10 years ago prices on yeah, these. Yeah, that is, yeah. So what did you pay for it? Oh, over three. Oh. It was a, it is a nice bank. Though. Did you yeah. buy that for resale at the time, or did you buy I that? I was actually collecting, ah, okay. you know, with Here the old go. gas pump yeah. and stuff, I was. So uh, you paid a premium yeah. to get it for yourself 10 years ago. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the market peaked 10 years ago. But a lot of areas of collecting have softened. Part of that's the economy. Part of that is a lot of these guys that we're collecting are too old, and I'm finding some of them want to sell and not collect anymore. If you were to sell the whole lot of those Anarcho tins, what would be your rock bottom, blow it out price? Oh. And forget what you got into them, because that's so irrelevant at this point. 600 bucks. You're probably not gonna be happy, but I'd go 400 on them. That's not leaving us a lot of room for profit. I just think we're just a little too far apart. That's okay. I hate to sell for less than I got in stuff. I either have to wait till the market turns around or uh, get buried with it. Phil, I'm gonna warn you. Scott here, Uh huh. he's a tank driver. I stalled it. Oh boy, <laughs> yeah. That's a World War II uh, toy to uh, save on metal, eh? <laughs> but there's several more buildings, and I'm thinking, well, maybe there's something in one of these buildings that Phil is not quite as attached to. I know it's one of your favorites because it was tucked away back here. Well, yeah. It's in pretty tough shape here. Oh, yeah. Water. Yeah, well. Hit me with your best shot, Phil. 100 bucks. Oh. Oh, oh, shocking. What about this? Well, this is actually a, a box that a roll of linoleum would come from. <laughs> The good news for us, though, is we're shipping. We can yeah, put stuff in it. Exactly. That's right. what I'm thinking. What would you want for that? It's got 30 bucks on it. I could knock five off that. All right, 25, done. Yeah, that's actually the best priced item I've seen so far, Phil. <laughs> I hope they're happy with it. A box is something we can use for packaging at the same time, and the graphics were good on that. They really know their stuff. Bought myself a Hercules made in Canada anvil. They're good guys. Decent sign. It's nice and bright. Somebody will want that sign. Well, well thanks a lot. You're tough to deal with. I know. But I get practice. You got practice. 60 yeah. years of it, apparently. Over there. Maybe you'll have a little less attachment to those anarcho tins next time I'm through. I have a feeling they might still be here. <laughs> could be, could be. Oh, I forgot to ask him about maple syrup. What about maple syrup? I was gonna buy some maple syrup. Does he sell maple syrup? He sells maple syrup. We're in a beautiful part of Southern Ontario. It's Oxford County. It's rich with antiques. Uh, we're going to see a guy called Marty. He's got a shop. He's a picker. He sells to other dealers like us. That's interesting. It's yeah. really a storage facility, right? Yeah. We're in Ingersoll, Ontario. This morning, we're hoping to get into Marty's place and pick some good things. There we are. Hey, I'm Sheldon. Sheldon. You must be Marty. Scott. Nice to meet you, Scott. Nice to meet you, Marty. So what's the story? This is where I drop everything. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's a bit haphazard in here, isn't it? <laughs> it is. I'd go out and hunt the stuff down myself because the thrill is in the hunt. So I'll dig through barns and basements and attics and junk stores. It doesn't matter how old it is. If it looks attractive to me and I think someone else will enjoy it, I'll pick it up. Boy, Marty, you got the eclectic collection here. So nothing's priced, so what do we do? Do we just look around and then ask you? Yeah, uh, just snoop around and see something you like, pull it out, and uh, I'm sure we can work out a deal. I can see that this is a guy that's like a flea market picker, but the good news for us is this is not a place for the public gets. This is a place where Marty takes his stuff, sorts it, prices it, and decides what he's gonna do with it. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> I'm gonna try that on. 
I love old servicemen jackets, whether it's for Maytag repairman, Esso. This was the Silverwood Dairies one. And they are hot amongst young kids today. How much is Bruce's jacket? That's 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Does it fit me well enough for 20 bucks? I don't know, Bruce. <laughs> Scott looks good in everything. <laughs> I thank you, Sheldon. <laughs> I, I feel good about myself now. No, I think I'm going to have to buy it. 20 bucks. That's good. My mother's been in the business for 30 years, so I've been dragged around to junk shops and flea markets and antique shows my whole life. We need something for the dashboard in the, in the vehicle. Sheldon's got a great <laughs> eye for a naked lady. She'd been uh, hulooing a little too much because uh, the spring was a little bit loose. I don't want to risk it. I, I think, think it's just the spring is scratched. There was a time those hula nodders were gold. Oh. I think you're getting attached to her. Well, no, I'm getting attached to whether or not I can flip it to somebody. I don't want the work associated with making that one look good enough to sell it. She's got a fairly short skirt, doesn't she? Yeah. <laughs> She's got skateboards. Oh, cool. Somebody changed the wheels on that one. Yeah. Yeah, they souped that one up. Skateboards are hugely collectible. Nash Manufacturing. Yeah, that's the standard department store, one of the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and still today. Not wood, they were fiberglass or plastic. It's got a good image on it. And guys that have skateboard shops, they want to hang them from the ceiling because they got the look. They're all vintage. So how much do you want for these? I'll go 30 bucks on the lot. 30. 25 bucks. All right, done. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make some money off those. Here we go. Marty, he's an interesting guy. He likes to buy really low and sell slightly higher. So he's a picker. He sells to other dealers like us. Look at the look in Rocket's face. <laughs> Isn't that classic? Sporting memorabilia is very desirable because guys that have bars want it. Hey, there's Jackie Parker. Guys that just collect sporting stuff want it. Great moments in Canadian sport. Oh, Bobby Hall. Bobby is just about to have the big slap shot. And the, the big curve. <laughs> the bug's and the scared. <laughs> That's hilarious. Miss Bobby, miss. I could see immediately that it was old, and it was just a really cheap 39 cent banner in its day. But you know what? Bobby Hull stuff's not common, and I know people that will pay $20, $25 for that easy. How much do you want for the Bobby? Uh, I was thinking 15 on the banner. I'd pay 10 for it. That's all I'd pay. That's fine. But, but everything's for sale, everything has a price. As long as I make my money and they make their money, I'm happy. I saw a Dumbo cookie jar, turnabout cookie jar. You could have Dumbo that way. You could turn his head around that way. Proper Walt Disney one. It was marked on the bottom, so it wasn't a knockoff. At least there's no chips. There's no Yeah, scratches. and they often no get line. busted right here. Yeah. On the rim when people put them in. Made in the 1940s and the early 50s, right after the movie, Dumbo came out. What would you want for Dumbo? Uh, you could have it for 15. I love Dumbo. Oh, I can do that. Yeah. Right. yeah. But I still cry at the sad parts. Lightning Kung Fu. I've never even heard of this movie. Have you, shall we? Oh, yeah, that was one of Hung Kam Bo's better movies. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great sound system you got there. Yeah, it's my baby. It's not the top of the line Bang & Olsen, but even a low-end Bang & Olsen's better than most of the stereo systems out there. Anything the Danes make, quality. Put some jazz on. Knock yourself out. There you are. That thing was made in the early 70s, and it still looks good today. OK, good. What would you need out of that? My best price is 300 on it. It's tempting. It's got one guy that likes this stuff. Let me think about that for a minute. But I want to mm -hmm. ask you about your fan. That is a cool fan. I think these were really popular in the 50s. Where'd you get it from? One of those parts of Detroit you're not supposed to be in. 
<laughs> what were you doing there? Picking. <laughs> it's a dual function, right? You could use it as a stool. Yep. And when the house got really hot, you turned the fan on. Fans in general are easy moves. What kind of price do you want from me for it? I'd let it go for 50 bucks. Oh, I'm having that. Deal. All right. Somebody's going to love that. We're buying a few things. Scott's pulling the trigger here and there. Where did these buttons come out of? A uh, dirty old estate I was digging through last week. They are dirty. Yeah, but there's some pretty cool ones on there, so I just grabbed the whole bunch. Some of them are older, right? Yeah. I found some Led Zeppelin pins. I noticed right in the middle of it was a real good early vintage Beatles pin. So what would you want for the whole rack of these things? You take them all in the stink with you for 10 bucks. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. All right. Yeah, no problem. Look at that. Have you ever seen that before? They're heat lamps. And what would they be for heat? I think they're more for relaxational. They're cool. I mean, they almost look like a black light. Look at these. You can tilt them to swivel around. You guys rotate on a different planet than me. What would you want for them? I'd have to get 60 out of the pair. I've never seen you stew for 60 bucks. I'm thinking to myself, you know, I feel better at 20 a piece, but before I can open my mouth. Thank you, Marty. Done. Here, I made All the right. decision for you, partner. I know you want them. I like to keep the process moving along. <laughs> Anything upstairs? Uh, yeah, I've got a couple big pieces up there and uh, some projects I haven't gotten around to yet. Wow, a little bit of everything here. Is this a chair? Yes, it's a rocker. That's funny. Yeah. When I first looked at it, I thought it was just something some hack put together. That's actually really good. Man, it was just beautiful to rock in. Like, is this something one off, or what is it? Well, there was a few hundred produced. So, like, it's a real piece of furniture. It's not just some quirky yeah, guy it, that made it. Well, he's a quirky guy. What's his name? William Lishman. The guy from the movie? The what movie? movie Fly Away Home. He teaches the geese to fly, right? Yep, to yeah. follow him in his lightweight plane. Yeah. Oh, that guy. Yeah, he's in Ontario, isn't yeah. he? North of Toronto, yeah. Right, right. He made this. Yes. He's a well-known artist and sculptor, and he's won national awards. It is a great piece of Canadian history. It made it to Architectural Digest, and then once sold at auction for $5,000. <laughs> I'm sitting in a $5,000 chair? Again. <laughs> yeah. You should try it. All right, I'm in. Yeah, this is a really cool chair. What do you have to have for it? Thousand bucks. If you'd have told me that before I sat in it, I would have thought you were crazy. <laughs> Holy smokes. Done. Now, Done. usually I'm the guy that steps up on modern furniture. We came up with a star piece out of the attic right at the end of the pick. The guy that buys this is going to have to take a test drive. That's yeah. the only, yeah. Yeah. that's what sells yeah. it. Yeah. You <laughs> never know what you're going to find in the next room you get into. And I think we made a good buy on all the stuff we bought from Marty. I know people that will pay anywhere between 5 and $20 a piece for them. Look at these cool lamps. Somebody's going to love to have that as a bit of mood lighting. It's a great little fan. Really nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Hey, hang on a second. Yeah, I had a little white hat. Brand spanking new from the Calgary Tourist and Convention Bureau. Bit of a tradition. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. It's official. You got to come to Calgary now. You've been white hatted. All right, I'll take care of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, now there's a guy yeah. that looks good in a cowboy hat. <laughs> OK. Have Thanks a lot, guys. Marty. Thanks a lot. What a good guy. Yeah, I really liked him. Yeah. That chair really didn't belong in the attic. That's a lot of money, but I don't feel uncomfortable about it at all. Nor do I. Really like this area. This looks like moose country, doesn't it? Yeah. Heading towards Kawartha Lakes. Lots of lakes, cottage country, and it's rich in material. We're going to see Shane and his father, George. So I think you're going to be excited about George's things. He's got all kinds of automobile collectibles, advertising. So we should be getting close. Yeah. It's got to be here. This has got to be here. Yeah, Nobody's got a white rose sign like that. Yeah, and the coat And there's cooler. a totem pole on the front. I didn't expect to see a totem pole. 
Look at that double yeah. shell visible gas yeah. pump. Beauty. How are you? Scott Cousins, how are you? Hi, George. Hi, Shane, I'm Hi. Sheldon. Couldn't help but notice the totem pole driving up. Where'd you get that? They come from Indonesia. That's amazing. They make that in Indonesia. Yeah. How long have you been collecting, George? Oh, man. I I think I started when I was little collecting license plates. I like uh, Coke machines. I do a lot of the Vendos. I've restored quite a few of those and uh, fixed them up and sold them. We moved out here about six years ago. It was four acres. We built a nice shop, and we're going to have a nostalgia store someday and do the restoration on the stuff. That's a repro yeah. shell sign. Yeah. yeah. It's a really nice globe. It's a figural they globe. They look great lit up. We heard that George wanted to sell and had a ton of stuff. So what would something like that sell for? In that condition, probably 2,500 bucks. Now, if you were going to sell it to us, what would you want for oh, it in that probably condition? probably 28. No. <laughs> <laughs> what we didn't hear is that he wants to sell retail out of a store he's going to open up. I can see where this is going. So you live there, yeah. and this is going to be a shop. Correct. Well, did you say he had some stuff in the house as well? Come on in. Come on down. Wow, lots to look at. Holy smoke. Got a real mix in here of stuff. When we get the store up and running, it's going to be kind of like a nostalgia warehouse that's going to have rows and rows of stuff. We're going to do jukeboxes, Coke machines, gas pumps, signs, pinball machines, the whole works. The paint on this is just perfect. I bought it out of Texas. But I think he's a recast. I know that Big Boy was still big in the 60s, because we used to have that deal with our folks that every one of us on our birthday, we get to take a couple friends. And let me guess, I usually picked Big Boy. <laughs> so what do they cost to get a maid? By the time I got this shipped up here, if I sold that, it'd be 2500 just to break even. I don't know about you, I'm getting hungry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> George is often paying top dollar for his pieces. And the Salada T sign, is that being restored? This one I had to repair just a little bit, and I kept all the cracks in it. And he's restoring and putting hours into a lot of them. Boy, did you ever do a nice job on this one? The porcelain was all damaged through there. So I cleaned it off and saw brass, so we polished up. Can I touch this one? Yeah, take it down, yeah. So as a consequence, George is investing a lot in the pieces that he had. There's a good door push, that Coke one. Yeah. But Scott's persistent. It's the shape that really sets this one off, isn't it? Yeah, it, very Art Deco in shape, but it's yeah. not 20s, it's 40s. I really enjoy restoring the signs. Well, this one's, I restored the ends. Yeah, I was going to say that one. It was in a fire, and I had to do from there over. You did a great job. That's a nice decorator piece for somebody. It's never going to be truly collectible because, like you said, it was half gone, right? Yep. I have trouble selling restored signs. Yep. People want them original. Like, this one is original. What would you want for something like that? Those ones go for about 400 In this condition? Yep. 400 seems to me to be steep. I think that's probably more than book price on it. I could do three on it, but I can't do any more than three. I probably got that in it. Yeah. yeah. Well, there we go. Yeah. I wish I had this when I was a kid. I never had anything like this. You look, look at good that. on that missile, I can tell oh. already, Scott. It's an absolutely beautiful original condition, probably a 7 out of 10, which is as good as you can hope to get one that isn't out of the box. It's got the little lever on the side, and it makes it click when it drives. The condition on this is just so nice. That's but what, 1950s, early 60s? Yeah, maybe? I think so, yeah. There's a million cars out there. Every kid had a little car, but not very many kids had a rocket. The kid that had that pedal car, he was the most popular kid on the block. I'm afraid to ask, but what do you want for it? It's going to be hard to part with. It's one of my favorites. There's certain items that you just kind of get attached to and you don't want to sell. And if you don't want to sell it, of course, the price goes up a bit. I could just tell by the look in his face, the intake of breath. Uh, I'd have to get 18 for it. I was afraid I was going to hear that. <laughs> There's no money in it for us at that, but it is a killer thing. I'm in love with it too much. Well, I grabbed these mostly because they're Canadian. Deal me a hand of blackjack. Scott can pick and play cards. I saw two trays there. The one was an old Molson's porcelain enamel beer tray. The other one was a piece of Canadiana. The other one was rare. Yeah. 
So what would you want for the trays? This being rare, I'd have to get 100 and a half, and that would be 100, that one. If I was to take the pair, would you go two? No, I can't do it, sorry. <laughs> Hit me. Yes! Oh, winner every time. <laughs> <laughs> Any more stuff? Maybe something that you're not quite as attached to? I don't know if I told you about the four trailers I have. Very crowded in those things. Is you're it? You're gonna have to put your climbing boots on. The trailers are so packed with stuff. Everything's just piled in there. Holy smokes. Nice and neat. Yikes. Wow. Well, maybe not too neat. Can I actually sort of wiggle in? Get sure. Up there. Holy cow. If you don't surface in about eight or 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, it's been nice. <laughs> There's some good stuff back here. I just wish I could get to it. Scott's like a Labrador retriever. I send him in, I tell him there's a bird in there. Go deep. Does he bring it back to you, oh, though? Usually, yeah. In the trailers, they're just piled with stuff. And every time I go in there, I go, oh, yeah, I got that. I forget, you know? Have you had a tetanus shot lately, Scott? No, but I got a feeling I'm going to need one. Oh. What do you see? A rusty 70s pedal car, I think. Now, that's a beater. What would you want for a beater? I'd want 100 for it. It's more rust than it is metal, I think. See, Shell, I think we could probably sell that pedal car for 75 to 100 bucks. That's about it, though. Nice checker cab. Yeah, they, them guys know the good stuff, that's for sure. They uh, tried to get some of my good stuff. What would you want for the checker cab? They're not for sale. OK. Did you do these Coke stools? They went around uh, one of the bars I built. It's like a $6,000 bar. Six grand. And I might sell some of the stuff off, but I'll keep a lot of the stuff to restore. What the heck is this thing? That's the bottom of a carnival ride. So is, that must be the bumper off that That's, car. Are you going to restore that at some point or what? It looks like too big of a job. <laughs> well, then what would you want for the grill? No, the grill would have to go with the car, because then uh, the car would be worth nothing. Well, it's worth nothing now. So how much would you sell the grill for and throw the car away? Uh, no. No? OK. Nah. I don't understand where he's coming from. He won't discount what he loves, and he won't discount what he doesn't. It's got to be a disease <laughs> to collect this stuff. I did all that climbing and digging. I got no treat. Oh, elbow. <sighs> Good job. You made it. Yeah. Yikes. Quite often, collectors have a little bit of a problem parting with things. There's lots of stuff in here that we'll be interested in. The only question we've got is, what's the price? Wow, you got a lot of Coke. You got right. a whole row of Vendo 44s over oh, there. Oh, well, you saw that, did you? Yeah. yeah. The Vendo 44 is probably the most popular of all the Coke machines, because it's so small, it can go anywhere in anyone's house. This one looks like it's in reasonably decent original condition. When we restore them, we take the compressors right out and rebuild them. We rebuild the coin mechanisms, uh, do all the body and paint, and when they're ready to go, they're pretty much better than brand new. If you do find one with a rack in it, these racks are gold because uh, they're very hard to find. I use, like, stack my beer sideways all the way up in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would sell uh, an unrestored 44 that's uh, complete with the rack and, and compressor and everything for about 2,500 bucks. Uh, when we restore them, we usually get about six for them. There's just no way. We got to buy those things at 12 to 1,500 dollars, flip them for two, and let the next guy make the extra five to 700 bucks on them. I'm more interested in this beat, but rare sign. It's rare because it's got the little guy in it. Yeah, and we welded that up because it was so rusty, and it's in the midst of being restored. If you were going to sell this, what would you sell it for in that condition? I'd have to finish it to sell it. I don't mind a few bumps and bruises on it. It shows its age, it shows it was used, and it's easier for me to sell with the bumps and bruises than if it's being restored. If you were going to sell it to me today, Just the way it what is. would you want for it? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't think it's for sale. OK, well, that makes it easy. <laughs> yeah. This big hey. Coke sign, what's the story on that one? It's missing a piece on top with the hangers, and it's to advertise your own store. As I recall it, this thing 
would look a bit like that, except it, like it would have the big stripes and then you'd have your name in it. It's a 1940s, 50s sign. Coca-Cola dealer would have come to you and said, hey, we want you to sell our product. We're going to give you a sign and we're going to put your name on it. Flip it over. Yeah, I'm trying to visualize what the top of that sign looked like before we think about whether or not we need to own it. The problem is, he's going to dick with that thing. He's going to touch it up and try to make it better. And in my mind, he's going to take all the value away from that sign. And what would you sell that for if you were going to sell it? You'd be up around eight, nine hundred dollars. The pickers are exactly like us. They're looking for wholesale prices. They got to make money, so their job is find the deal, make a bit of money, and still sell it for a good price. And that's exactly what we do. Speaking of coke, you used to see these all the time. You don't see them as much anymore. The coke cops. It looks like an original bottle. Yeah, it's original base on it. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's heavier. Yeah. Really popular item. It's almost like a cornerstone for a Coca-Cola collector. Everyone that collects Coke wants to have a Coke cop. So what would you need to get out of the Coke cop? Uh, I was asking 15, but 12. 12 would take it. That's an entry wound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's an exit wound. <laughs> Just a bit too much with that many bullet holes in. Fortunately, that was a little lower <laughs> than they were intending. <laughs> I can see them offer me a lot less on things because they have to make money on it, too. Oh, that's a beauty. Yeah, that's a nice bike. Nice condition, too. Yeah, yeah, it's a girl's bike. It's attractive, it's original, and this one you haven't restored. It's good enough just the yeah, way it I is, Yeah, I think I just it? keep yeah, it the way it I is. Agree. It's kind of fun. Everyone loves old bikes, particularly bikes out of the 50s and 60s that have that really streamlined look to it. And that had a good look. It was a girl's bike, which was a problem in one sense because they're more common than men's bikes. But it was also good because girls actually ride those bikes today, and that's who we're likely going to sell it to. That's a beaut, eh? <laughs> Does it have the backup brakes? Yeah, it does. It's got the, the coaster brakes. It's a bit wobbly, though. I don't think the bike is wobbly. <laughs> I, think, I think that might be you and a few uh, too many suds last yeah, I night. I think it yeah. is. I think it is. That's yeah. a nice bike, though. So what do you want for that? Um, I should get 300 for it. You know, it's getting up there where it's yeah. questionable how much we could make off it, if anything. That's I, a great bike. Would you take 250? Yeah, I'd go to yeah. Done. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm glad I sold him something. <laughs> I think we have a market for that. We'll make a few bucks. Pay for the gas. <laughs> hey, guys. That was nice. Hey. That's nice Thanks to meet you. Thanks a lot. Take care. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Happy <laughs> Thanksgiving, you guys. Yeah. yeah. Big Boy made me kind of hungry for a burger. Maybe have some suds. That was quite something. Got to see some neat things, but couldn't buy any. I don't think my wife would be too happy if I brought a semi-truck trailer and put it on the front lawn. Do you think so? I'd say you're getting close. We're going to see Tim. We're going to take the Lishman rocker to get an appraisal, get his opinion on it. Well, if he knows something about that rocker, I'm going to be impressed. I'm with you. I, I knew the movie. I didn't even know Lishman made rockers. We know there's profit in that chair. How much? Well, that remains to be seen. Oh, there. Here we go. Yeah. I love doing appraisals because you just never know what someone's going to walk in with. We wanted you to take a look at this for us. Have you ever seen one of these? Yeah, Lishman chair. They're quite unique. We made a few hundred of them back in the 70s, and they're highly collectible because they're a work of art. Is what they are. They're really comfortable. Yeah, yeah, these are really cool. Seen it in books, but it's not something you're gonna handle every day. We yeah. stepped up for it. We didn't yeah. get it for a hundred bucks. We paid yeah. a grand for it. What do you think something like this would sell in terms of marketability and everything else? You have to take it a couple hours away to the greater Toronto area where you have uh, a collector base, people that really know the stuff, that are really hot for it. If I was wholesaling to a, another dealer, uh, like 2,500 bucks or so. Pretty good. <laughs> you went in with both feet, yeah. but you're going to win it. Hey, that's great. I really wanted to see what he had in his drop-off warehouse, because he's a picker, buys and sells, we're looking to buy. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Now let's get up to the house. Yeah. 
didn't think we were going to get anything from Tim other than an appraisal. I've already white hatted him. Do you look good in it? Yeah, he's one of us. Do you look as good as me? I hate Sid. He looks better. I handle a lot of different things, so I'll have gas and oil things. I got toys. Find anything? Oh, there's all kinds of neat little doodads here and there. Mantiques, if you want to call them that, the stuff that guys really like. What? Walking stick. Ten bucks. Done. Is that a moose call? I believe it is, yeah. Well, you can have it for 15 bucks. Everybody knows that they want something unusual. It's a birch bark moose call. It's got to be worth 15 bucks. They come and find it with me, because I get the unusual. Oh, you got a couple beaver sealers. Yeah, beaver sealers, they're a fairly local jar. They're made over in Wallaceburg, which is a couple hours away from here to the south. These are the common ones, right? Because yep. they're pointed to the right. Yep. What do you need out of those? Those ones I need 10 bucks each. Done. There's nothing more Canadian than a beaver. I work on high volume, low profit, and just move the stuff. Because, you know, really it boils down to it's just stuff. That's a pitter, isn't it? Yep. It's yeah. got a really nice set of Art Nouveau legs on it, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Nice piece of cast iron, that's yeah. for sure. Hit us with your best shot, Tim. 80 bucks. That's a good piece. Is it? Yeah. 80. Picture. Done. This is fun. Dealing with those guys was pretty easy. They're on the same page where I'm at. This big uh, dirt mover. Steam shovel. Original paint. Nice shape. It should retail about two and a quarter. Real nice red and black digger, Canadian made. Every company under the sun made that digger at one point in time. The difference with this one was condition. It was about 9.5 out of 10. The fine toys and original paint is really good. They're getting harder and harder to find, and they bring the premium dollar. I need 100 bucks for it. Let's do it. Yeah. Let the next guy make a few bucks, and then he can come back with his profit and buy more. Is this an American company? Crimco? They were across Canada. I know that for sure, because I've seen them on out of different places. It was a chocolate milk sign. Very unusual, nice size, good crisp image. Probably, I would say, 30s, because it's embossed. How much did you say you wanted for that? Uh, 40 bucks. Is that your best? 30? 30. All right, just because you're shaking. Done! <laughs> no, no regrets. I'm happy to move the stuff along, let somebody make some more money. What do you want for the blanket? You want to buy my packing blanket? Five bucks. Done. This is the quick speed pick. I love it. That's Any cool. traps or anything? Uh, I've been looking for a good bear trap. We'll have to go to the front, and I'll open that up, and we'll look up front there. Yeah, there it is. Oh. Now, there she be. Yeah, that's a blacksmith bear trap. They've welded something in the springs. Yeah, they've made it so you can't use it. Right. They don't want you using these traps anymore. Finally, I found a real bear trap. It was an old blacksmith made bear trap. A lot of people that have cabins, that's just such a big, impressive thing. It's a cool thing. Piece of history. What do these sell for? They're generally about 400 bucks or so. In this condition? In that condition. Because it's pretty rusty, right? Yep. What do you need out of this? <sighs> I'd like 250, but you can have it for 200. That's what I got invested in it, so. You know, Wait. I've been looking for a bear trap all over Canada. <laughs> yeah, shake the man's hand. Yeah. 200 it is. This is great. <laughs> That's some good picking. That best picking we've had so far. Yeah. We could stay here picking all night if we can. Delco batteries. <laughs> yeah, that's a battery stand. Comes all apart. It's a really cool piece. That would have sat in a service station probably in the 1960s. Great display piece for guys that have oil bottles and cans and all that stuff. Huh. Any guy that's tried to put together a service station display or a gas station display will want that piece for his collection. What do you yeah. need out of that? I need 100 bucks out of it. And all the pieces are right there for it. Done. Is that a Massey? No, I don't think it's Massey. There are a lot of people that buy tractor seats. They'll weld a piece of metal to the bottom of them and use them as bar stools. Never have any trouble selling a good tractor seat. What did you want for all these seats? There's six seats there, I think, all together. 300 bucks for the six. Several weeks ago, we were at a pick, and the guy wanted 300 bucks for one seat. Shake the man's hand. Thank you. Thank you. The guys are welcome to come back anytime. That's your new lucky hat, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> Brand spanking new. We've been doing well, but I think we better get this packed up and get on the road before it's too dark. 
Watch your fingers. Yeah, so this is a whole mater. It's just a wall hanger anyhow at this yeah, point. Yeah. So. It's a pretty seat. Okay. We can use it as a rack to put some of our items on for our next sale, and we can put a price tag on it. I guess with the white hat and you guys loaded, <laughs> I've been picked. Yeah, you've been picked. This made the whole trip for us, this pick. Yeah. It was a pleasure, man. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Tim, you look good in that cowboy hat. Well, I got to look good in something. <laughs> Take care. See you later. When you give a white hat to a guy, you're giving him an invitation to come to Calgary to visit the city. I agree.